Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do a summer top just like you see, and it's available in small all the way to extra large for sizing. Today we're going to go through the ins and outs of making this particular top. To answer all of your questions, I know some of you are going to email me to ask me to change the sizes to something different. Just so you know, this pattern was designed for small to extra large. I'm not a clothing designer and I don't know what the mathematics would be to change this design to get it any bigger or any smaller from a ladies. So the pattern's available from small all the way to extra large. The yarn today is going to be Lily Sugar and Cream. You could also use your Bernat Handicrafter yarn. It's 100% cotton. Both brands are. And this is the kind of idea that you would want to wear in the summer to make it cotton so it's less hot. And you're going to notice that when you go to play with this up front, it's going to feel a little bit stiff. But once you wash it, it's going to be uh, softening up. We also have uh, tips on the crochetcrowd.com for making the color set permanently. And uh, you may want to treat your particular top with that solution first before then wearing it and then before obviously washing it so that you can keep the colors as vibrant as they appear on the yarn ball. So this pattern is an oldie but a goodie. So it's an old format for Yarnspirations.com and you'll see that all the sizes are here as well as the ball counts. And you're going to notice that it's in sizes for solids and ombres. That's just variegated yarn. Variegated yarn is usually yes, uh, less yardage so therefore you'll need more yarn to do that. So you have all the counts for being able to do it in order to make this work. And then you also have the bust sizes if you want to look at it from this uh, point of view. So this is a really interesting pattern. It's really quite simple. It's just one page and uh, I know that the older format is not as pretty as the new format but all the information is still here and it's still available to you and it's still easy to follow if you just take step by step. So today I'm working with the small version and it says that you have 80, 86, 92 and 98. If you're unfamiliar with crochet patterns what happens is that small, medium, large and extra large are all given in the same pattern. So when there's brackets like this the first one is small, medium, large and extra large. So whenever a decision needs to be made you'll notice that it will give the brackets of, of that information. So it says continue in the pattern until worked uh, from the beginning measures approximately 11, 12, 14 or 16. So you have to choose the number that you are currently working with depending on your size. It also has centimeters for us here in Canada as well as uh, areas of the world that uh, use metric instead. So it's a very simplistic pattern. Let me show you what the actual one panel looks like. They're both identical and it's actually really quite easy to be honest with you. So here's one panel completely done and what I want you to pay attention to is that you're going to start off in the bottom right down here and you're going to work yourself up to a certain amount of inches and then we're going to slip stitch on one side to bring it uh, over and then you're going to go across and then stop earlier on this side here and then just work this box shape up until you get to a certain point. At the top then one particular um, um, band of the shoulder will go completely up and then the other one is added afterwards. So yeah one of them always has to be added on afterwards when doing this kind of concept. So this is a front or back panel. It really doesn't matter and when you're done with it you're just going to sew the tops together. So it will be together with the other side. You're going to leave the neck obviously open and you're going to need leave the arms open and then just go down the sides just like so. So you'll notice that it forms her more in a, a shape. That's because it's flat here and it's more boxier looking but once you put it onto a human form it will be able to flex with you. So let's take a quick look at the stitches. You're going to notice that there's a repeat and it's only two rows that repeat each other over and over and over. And the only reason why they're doing that is on the edge you will end up in a slightly different area. If you can see that there's actually shell work in this particular project and so the shells then change location for the next one to be over here and then the next one will be over. So it looks like it's just offsetting each other when you go to do it. So because of this fact this pattern is exceptionally easy to follow. You just have to pay attention to your edges when you're going up and it's off and good and ready. So today I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do and then I'm going to bring you back to the sample because I already have the second side already partially done. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm going to show you how to get started and then I'm going to have you go to a certain height that is in the top. So right here and stop. My other sample that I have here off camera has that already completely done and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take you through the rest of the tutorial through this other sample that I've already got done so that I can have the front and the back completely done by the end of it. So I'm using both of the um, samples. So I do one and then I kind of use the second one to do the measurement to make sure that I get the right height and then I just kind of do it um, yeah, um, really quite easily. So without further ado let's grab our four millimeter and that is going to be <laughs> 
you think I could remember that information a four and a half millimeter size a US 7 crochet hook in order to follow today's tutorial. So to get started today you need to chain the amount of number that you're going to be working with. So I'm doing small today. So my chain will be 80 and that's on the instructions. So it either be 80, 86, 92 or 98 and this will keep it in balance for the pattern no matter what size you did. So you just have to chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and go all the way to the chain count that it says on the pattern and meet me back here in just a moment. So now that I have my chaining of 80 done you could have the other sizes. It doesn't matter because the repeat pattern is going to stay in balance for you. So let's move on to the first row and we're gonna start immediately with establishing the pattern right off the bat. So it's not one of those that you do single crochet all the way across or double crochet and then worry about the repeat pattern later. You do it right off the bat. So second chain from the hook. So just one and two and turn it over and get the back loop only of the chain. Second chain from the hook. Just like that. Sorry I'm all thumbs today. So you're gonna skip two chains. So one and two go to the third back loop only and I want you to double crochet into that one. So just double crochet and then chain one. Going into the same stitch again. Double crochet again. Okay then chain one and then double crochet one last time into the same one. So each one of the shell works has three double crochets in it that has one chain that separates both of them. So come back down to the chain, skip two, one and two and single crochet into the next. Okay, so let's establish the repeat pattern. So that's what we know already so let's do it again. So skip two and single crochet into the third one. Again the back loop only and then I want you to chain one and then single cro or double crochet So let's continue across. You're gonna skip two and then double crochet into the third one and then chain one, double crochet into that again, chain one and double crochet again. That's your repeat pattern going all the way across. So skipping two, one and two and single crochet into the third. So I'm just gonna show it one more time. Okay so you're skipping two, going to the third for a double crochet chain one, double crochet again, chain one and double crochet again and then skip two and single crochet into the next. So what I want you to do is continue that same pattern going all the way across and I'll see you at the end of the chain. So as you come to the end of the chain you'll notice that there's three stitches left if you've done your counts right and so you skip two and then it's just a single crochet right into the very end. The nice thing about this pattern is that the front end and the back end of a chain, so the front, the start and the front or and the back, <laughs> the start and the end actually is the same so it always stays in balance. So let's turn our work and go for row number two which is gonna be part of the repeat pattern going forward. So let's begin row number two. So we're gonna repeat row number two and three over and over and over and for the duration of this project and the size of the width changes obviously as you're getting higher up into it. So we're going to uh, chain up one. So whenever you end right, right now and it's a single crochet in order to start this next row you have to always chain four. So one, two, three, and four. And what this is, is it's, it's a double crochet plus chain one and you were going to put a double crochet into the same single crochet underneath. So what you're doing is you're starting off with a half of one of these shells. So there will only be two and then you're just gonna come to the middle one of the group of three and just single crochet. So now the shells are all going to be appearing in the single crochets all the way across. So just single crochet into the or sorry double crochet into the next single crochet which is directly between the shells. Chain one and then double crochet back into that one and then chain one and double crochet back in. Okay so it's still the same thing that you already know. It's just a different location. So then come to the middle one of the group of three and single crochet. So let me show you one more time. So you see that you're in between the shells. Come into the middle one which is a single crochet and just do a shell. So double crochet, chain one, 
double crochet, chain one and double crochet and then single crochet into the middle one of the group of three. So please do that all the way across. This is uh, row number two and you're seeing that the, the shells are now starting to blend with each other quite nicely. So continue that and I'll see you at the end of the row. So this continues to still be row number two and I'm working my way across and it's just continuing to repeat the pattern. So when you finish off row number two you have to think about where you are and so you have a full shell left plus a single crochet left when you're doing this. So what you have to do, I, I just finished the last shell, you still single crochet into the last shell work that's below and you're now gonna finish the last shell which will be partial. So it'll be a double crochet into the single followed by chain one and double crochet one more time. So it's like you began right in the very beginning when you chained four so it ends the same way. So that's how you finish off uh, row number two and we're gonna turn our work and do row number three. So row number three very easily so you're at the top now of a double crochet so this means that this first one is a chain one and it's a single crochet into the top one only. So now you're gonna immediately start like you kinda did on the chain where there's going to be a shell right into the single crochet that's between them. So just, just go right over for a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. And then just single crochet into the middle one of the group of three. And begin again. So just look for the single crochet, it's right in between and begin to do another shell. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet and then just single crochet into the middle one of the three. So you're going to repeat uh, rows number two and three over and over. Let me get you to the end of this row to show you how to finish once again and then you're just gonna keep on going until you get to a certain height and I'll discuss that in a few minutes. So to finish row number three you're going across like you normally would Okay, and you can see that you've got a partial shell over here. You're on the top of a shell so you only have the indentation to worry about. So you're just gonna finish that last final shell. It's a full shell on row number three. So it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet and chain one, double crochet and then all you have to do here is that you come into the third stitch. So one, two and three and then just single crochet into the third stitch. Don't go into a gap space. Go right into a stitch so it stays and holds and then just single crochet. So what I need you to do is repeat row number two and three all over again. So just quickly let's just go number two just to get you started. So right now you're on a single crochet so it's like before chain four and then double crochet into the same one and then just come to the top of the middle one of the group of three single crochet in and then begin. So it's just a matter of how you get started in order to do this pattern. So let's review on how high you need to make this part of the pattern and then I'm gonna bring you back to my pattern that I've been working on and uh, we're gonna continue the tutorial from that. So it's a different color of yarn and this was just to show you how to get started today. So we're here back on the pattern and so you're gonna repeat rows number two and three over just exactly what I've showed you. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna continue to do this pattern until it measures a certain distance. So it's small, medium, large, extra large. Or extra large. So for myself with the small it's gonna be 11 inches. So it's right from the very start up into 11 inches and you are going to um, finish off with the third row. So make sure that whatever one you do when you get to 11 inches this is gonna be the third row and uh, I'll show you tips on being able to do that as well. And so you'll have the other sizes just in case you're doing that. So what I'm gonna do is leave that for you and then I'm gonna bring you back to my regular project and we're gonna show you how to do the step in so that you can start working on this as well. So right now you have to get to the set amount of inches. Myself it's 11 inches and you have to end on row number three. It matters where, how you end because the way that you have to start this section here is counting on you ending on row number three so that you can have it in balance and I'm gonna show you some tips on that. So what we're gonna do in the next part of this tutorial is that I'm gonna show you how to do an indentation on one side so getting all the way over and then I'm gonna show you how to finish it earlier and then you're gonna do this particular block to a certain amount of inches and then you're gonna carry on and do the straps then from that point. So let's bring you back to this project here and let's show you how to do the indentation in. So here we are as a project and I'm getting ready to go and we have to do an indentation in and then we're gonna carry up and then we're gonna stop earlier on this side. Here's the thing. 
all of the sizes are the same for what you're about to do right now with doing the indentation in. So you're gonna notice that when you ended on row number three, you're gonna notice that you have a shell that is on the outside here. Okay, that and then there's another shell. So there's two there. And then you have all your shells across but then on the outside you have a shell on the outside and another one right here. Here's the thing. Slip stitch, the count is gonna take you to the middle one of the second one. Isn't that easy? And then when you go all the way across you're going to end in the middle one of the second last one. So you can either count it, it'll work out for you or you can just look for that. It just is really that easy. So let's show you how to do the indentation in and then we're gonna work our way up from this point. So let's begin. We're going to do a slip stitch of nine and the nine includes the spaces in between. So coming right into the first one. So you're gonna go over. So just go right in through and through and your goal is to get to the middle one of the group of, of the next group. So this is the second shell in and so you can count it over or you can be like me and this is a space. So you're just gonna go right into the, the chain in the space and you're gonna keep on going so that you have slip stitch nine spaces. But if you know that you have to get over to the middle one of the group of two, you don't really need to count. You just have to just slip stitch over like I am and just making sure that you just get it. Uh, don't be too tight with your slip stitching because it will buckle. So you just wanna be nice and loose to it and you're gonna eventually then get to the middle one which is the next one of the, of the second shell. So your goal now is to take it from this point and we're gonna start the pattern exactly how you know it and you're gonna go all the way to the side and you're going to stop in the middle one of the second group over here. So let's show you how to get started from this point. So we're gonna get started from this point just like it was a regular side but now you're in a different location. So see where you are, you're on the top of a shell. So what does that mean? It means that you're gonna chain one and you're going to single crochet into the top of that chain and your next shell is gonna be into the middle in between into the single crochet there. Okay, so it's just a matter of keeping an eye on it and you do your regular shell as normal and you're gonna do that your regular stitching all the way across. So just go to the top of the next one and you were going to stop in the middle one of the, of the second group before the end. So just right in the middle. So do this all the way across to that point and I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way across and I'm just following the pattern as I know it. So keeping it all in balance and I'm looking for the la uh, the second last shell which is currently what I'm about to hit now. So you can see I have two shells left, one and two. I'm just gonna stop and I'm gonna single crochet on the top of the middle one of the second one and that's it. So there's gonna be nine stitches left over. It says stop nine, leaving nine stitches. This is where you're stopping. So now you're just gonna continue the pattern all the way as you know it. So you're just gonna turn your work and right where you are right now you're on a single crochet. So what does that mean? The next one has to be a chain four and then double crochet in. Here's the thing. When you do this and you're gonna follow the pattern as you know it, on the other side it doesn't look so obvious when you get over there. So just right over here. So just make sure that you are watching for that at least this first time and then you're gonna continue the pattern up for a certain amount of inches. So let me talk about how many inches that will be and then we'll carry on from that point and I have to do this off camera in order to get up there as well. So we're here on the pattern again and we're gonna continue to do our repeat pattern as we know it and it's just a repeating of the two rows and essentially it says repeat until it beginning, until it works from the beginning measures. So now for my small it'll be a total of 16 inches so it's the base of it all the way to the next section will be 16 inches and then it will be 18 and a half, 20 and a half or 23 if you're working on the other sizes. So you go all the way to the base of the project right here on it. Okay, so you're gonna measure from here and then all the way to the new section way up here and then that'll be the inches and then you're gonna stop as well and it also says to make sure that you end on row three which is important also for the straps and then we'll take you up from that point. So just continue to go back and forth now. Get your amount of inches that you need and then meet me back here and off camera. I'm gonna have to work on that too. So now I'm back and I have my height now done. I did this all live off camera just a few moments ago and now my inches match the uh, size that is required on the pattern. So for myself it was 16 inches then from the base all the way to the top. So you, if you're doing a different size you'll have to take a look at that. So what you have to do is you have to end on row number three before starting the next round and if you go to do this and, and you're not sure which one that is then the last stitch here was just a single crochet into the final in order to begin. 
again. So now we're going to start doing the straps. The straps are relatively easy. We're gonna continue with the same yarn strand and work our way up in a strap. I'm gonna tell you some tips on that and then you're gonna finish that strap and then come back and do the other side for the other strap just like so. And you're almost done at this particular point in the tutorial. It'll get a lot quicker even from this point. So let me uh, share you some tips with you. So here we have a close up of the strap and it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to follow. We're gonna continue with the same yarn that goes up and what we're going to do from this particular point is that we are just gonna start off with a half shell. Then we're gonna do a full shell and then a half. That's all the strap is and then you just continue the pattern as you already know it. And so because of this it just is really quite simple right? You've been following the pattern all along. So let's get you started on doing your first strap and then what we're, we're gonna do then is get that done fast enough and then we're gonna come to the strap on the other side and the strap on the other side starts off in the middle of the project not the end so that it keeps the consistency going all the way up. So let's begin to do this next. So let's begin to do the strap. So we're only concentrated up until we hit the second single crochet. So here's the first one. We're gonna hit the second one and that's all we're gonna do for a strap. So let's, uh, I've already chained one so I'm gonna chain a total of four. So this is two, three and four and then coming into the top of that first single crochet we're gonna do it as you normally do it. So it's a double crochet. So single crochet in the top of the next shell and then do your shell in the middle of, with the single crochet. It's already what you know. One thing I love about this pattern is so easy to remember what to do. Okay and then just single crochet in the top of the shell. So you do one full shell and then this last one here the single crochet is just a half shell. So it's just a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. That's all there is to it. Just try that last one again. So now you're just gonna turn your work and just continue to go. So you have to get the strap done all the way up for a certain amount of inches for my small size. I now have to then take a new measurement from all the way from the base all the way to the top and it should be 18 inches. I know that I'm already at 16 here so it's just a matter of two inches that I have to uh, add on for this in order to make this work. So let's uh, just continue along and I'm just going to just turn my work. So you're at the top here, chain one, single crochet in the top of the first one and then you're gonna shell into the first single crochet that you run into and then keep doing that and then single crochet in the t middle one of the three and then shell into the next single crochet. Shell is just a technical word for um, the procedure that we're doing. So it's not a standard of what it is. It's just been defined in the pattern. So then you come to the third chain up in the final side and then stop. Then turn your work and then keep on going. So I'm gonna leave that with you and get your uh, strap all the way completely done and then I'm gonna take you to the other strap next. So I'm just finishing up the first strap. I wanna leave you with the tip. When you go to finish the strap, leave on an extra long tail that you're gonna use to sew to its neighbor. So what's gonna happen here is if this is your first one, just do it as per the measurements. You're gonna notice something. I'm gonna be very uh, transparent here. The strap changed size in the last time that you've seen it and I realized that I had actually followed the wrong size for the, the height of the strap from the base. So for myself it was 18 inches. I told you to only go two inches and I'm like gee that doesn't look like two inches and it turns out I did 20 inches and not 18. So um, I took out some of the strap here. So if this is your second piece that you're going through now use this piece as, as a base right? So you want to, you, you have to match the size so you might as well use it as a base in order to follow the other one, right? Does that make sense? So you can see it completely matches. So if one's out of alignment this is how you're gonna be able to tell. So let's move on now and we are going to then go to the other strap on the other side and I'll give you some tips for that. So let's complete the other side. We're gonna start off with a fresh strand of yarn here and we are going to look at this project uh, really constructively. So we have two shells that you can see here. So the very first one that we go into is this single crochet right here. Okay it's not the middle one it's this one. Okay so if that's a single crochet that I'm about to go into what is my first stitch? Do you remember? It's I'm gonna attach it first and then I'm gonna chain four. So one, two, three, four. It's a partial shell and then you're gonna come back in with the double crochet. And now you're just gonna lay this straggler down on top of it and trap it into position. So you're gonna single into the top of the middle 
shell and then you're gonna shell into the next one. So continue to bury that straggler in as you go and then it will be out of sight, out of mind and it will be completely secure as well. So now you're just gonna single crochet into the top of the next shell and then you're gonna finish this one here with uh, a double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So a half shell like that. Okay, so you got yourself started and so you're gonna turn your work and then start up the next one. So this one's chain one. You're in the top now so it's just single crochet. Just come into the middle, single crochet and do a full shell. So at this point you're pretty much familiar with this pattern. I know myself I've sped up quite a bit uh, just being able to do it and just following it along and because the straps are so short and they're so narrow these things don't take long to make in order to do this. So really you're kind of on a holiday. So chain up, uh, go into the third chain up for a single crochet, turn your work and now you go to the same amount of height that you were recommending or uh, that was recommended in the pattern for myself. It's only 18 inches from the base so I don't have a long way to go and I can measure it also with the other one that I just finished to give myself a reference point as well. So please do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is that we are going to put our panels together and we're going to sew them on the top of the straps up here. So we're gonna put them together and then we're gonna leave open the neck area which we'll handle later uh, to do final finishing. We're gonna leave open the sides there for when the arms come through and then we're just gonna sew directly down the sides of each of, the, each of this. So what you're looking at right now is the inside of the of the top. So once we're done we'll have to then go the other way. We'll have to flip it outside right. So in order to do this kind of idea you just have to kind of match the stitches and you're gonna need a darning needle. So if you left an extra long strand for yourself you could have had it on both sides like I did. Um, it's just really quite convenient if you leave at least one um, to have a long strand and you're going to use a darning needle and you're gonna hide in your your ends and you're gonna attach it as well. So just uh, grab your darning needle and place that yarn through. Because it's already attached to the project you don't have to worry about it too much. And so I got two strands here. I'll deal with the one but I'll hide them both at the same time. And what I want to do is that I want to come across the project and just match stitch to stitch. Just all the way across. Okay, so just going right across and then over. This is called a whip stitch. So I'm gonna lay this other straggler down on top and I could also use it as a darning needle as well to hide it if I had to. So just moving along and you just continue to match the stitches all to each other and therefore to keep it all in balanced and the yarn just goes right up over top. So just once you get it established you can kind of speed up on the process to do it. And the idea is just to make sure every stitch match each matches each other so it stays in balance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way across this one here. This is single crochet single. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go all the way across on the top of the strap and then I'll show you how to weave in the end that you have and then I'm gonna leave the rest of the sides and top of the other one for you to be able to finish. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So once I get to the end of it I'm just still matching stitch to stitch. I want to just tie it into a quick little knot on the outside. It's cotton yarn so it'll hold out forever and ever. Cotton is really hard to break. It's one of the strongest fab uh, fibers out there. So just tying a knot and then all I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take my yarn strand and I'm just going to drag it through some of the stitch work on this side. So don't let it go to the other side of the project. Just stay on this side and you're gonna go through about an inch. Okay and just kind of snug things up. Don't be over tight about it and then go back in the other direction for two and then go back in the final direction for three. And now your yarn strand is completely buried in and it will not never fall out on you. So then you can just safely just trim it right down to the project like so. So in the other side it looks like a nice clean join as you see right here. So let's uh, continue along. You're gonna do the other strap and the sides now and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm back and now I've sewed in all my pieces just like you see and now it's all one unit and now I'm looking at the inside so now I'm just gonna fold it to the right side which is the, the good side. So if people are looking at you it's the side that you're looking at. The seams are then underneath. So we're not quite done. You, we still have to uh, manipulate and do the bottom edging to do a final look. 
um, right down here and then we're also going to do a little bit of arm work here and then we're completely done and then you can just stretch it if you want to in order to get it to lay flat on the seams as well. So let's begin doing the bottom edge. So now we're gonna do the bottom edge down here and we're just gonna circle one time doing the same thing that you already know and it's just a matter of just putting it in there. So you're going to notice when we did this is that we had three double crochets that were part of the shell and we wanna concentrate on the stitch that's right uh, below it. Okay, so if you were looking at it from this perspective it was the one where they're all coming out of. So what we're gonna do is start off right on an edge and we're just gonna slip stitch to be able to uh, sorry, uh, do a slip stitch to join it and then chain one and then one single crochet into that same one. So now in the base where the three are attached to each other just like you see you're gonna do another shell. So just lay down the straggler over top of it and you're gonna do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet and you already know how to do this. Okay, so then the next one here is the single crochet that separates the shells. So you're just gonna match it, make it a single crochet again and then come to the next one here which is the base of the other, the other three and then shell once again. So you're creating the shell to appear upside down so when you're wearing it you'll have a nice uh, shell finish at the base of your tank top or your summer top. So continue it again. So just single crochet into the next single crochet and then shell into the next the base of the other shell that's there and I want you to go all the way around doing this and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Very very easy, absolutely. See, nice finish. When you get all the way back around you're just continuing to follow the pattern as normal and then the last shell here, the first one is into the first single crochet that you had started with and now you're just gonna take that end and just weave it in using your darning needle. This will be an area that you will probably tug on as far as like uh, when you're pulling it down in just case it rides up on you. So you wanna make sure that you take that time and put it through a darning needle and weave it in, in and out three times like I've already shown you today and then uh, you're good to go. So what you wanna do at this particular point is that we want to concentrate on the shoulder, on the inner arm area. We're gonna do both of them and I'm only gonna show it to you on the ones and it's actually a really simple idea and it gives it a nice refined finished look uh, when you're concentrating or sorry when you're wearing it um, and it's not so boxy looking as well. So just make sure that you weave in your ends and then we'll start one of the, the arms next. So let's start one of the arms next. You're gonna do the same thing for both and it has a recommendation for the amount of stitches that you should work around in the small size is 74 and the other sizes are 80, 80 and 84. So you just wanna concentrate on making it look good. So just insert right where the seam is and I'm looking at the good side of the project, the right side and I attach and then chain one and then single crochet. So what I wanna do is equally space um, 74 um, single crochets but to be honest with you I'm just gonna make it look good I'm not gonna worry about counting so much. Uh, you know I've been crocheting a long time so that I have the ability to pretty well do that without much concern. So the nice thing about it is that the next row or the next round that you're about to do on this thing it doesn't really rely on stitch count at all because it's just one single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. So it's just a matter of making this round look decent and then you're just gonna come back and just uh, do one more round based on what you just put in. So just make it look good and uh, you can follow the stitch counts as recommended by the pattern if you wish and I'll see you back here. Just go all the way around and then meet me back at the very beginning. So I'm coming all the way around on the arm and just make it again making it look good just kind of evenly spacing things out and once they come all the way to the very beginning I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet and now we're just gonna slip our chain up one and then just one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around and then you're gonna just slip stitch and fasten off and that's done and then you're gonna go and do the other side. So what I'll do is I'll meet you at the end of this rotation just make sure you got that and then I'm gonna leave the other side for you and then we're gonna then show you the photo of the finished uh, sample that I'm doing here on camera today. So I'm just coming around and finishing it all up and just last stitch in, just slip stitch to the first single crochet and you're done. So take the straggler now, just weave in your ends, go back and forth three times and uh, that'll be good to go and then go and do the other side. 
So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna take you and show you my finished sample. I'm just gonna do the other one off camera and then take it on outside and then show you what it looks like on the model. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Enjoy your new summer top. Hopefully you've enjoyed and this is a great little pattern. I think it's awesome and until next time have a super day. We'll see you again real soon and enjoy.